Hey, hi, hello guys, my name is Mia Marie and you are currently watching my Sinistry compatibility series where I go through all the 12 signs, sun signs, and how they get along. Now, as a general disclaimer, we reference so much more than just the sun sign for compatibility, but the importance of the sun and understanding someone's sun sign and accepting it and supporting it is that the sun sign describes the motives, the behaviors, the experiences that contribute to someone's sense of sanity. So we're not talking so much about what someone needs emotionally or how they flirt or what makes them great in bed, all of those very, you know, romantic uh, topics, we're talking about how to support someone's vitality, someone's sense of self, and someone's healing human journey. So keep in mind that this is just a gentle introduction, and you can get so much more by booking a session with me or another fantastic astrologer. Sun and Aries. Someone who was born with their sun sign in Aries is here to establish a sense of self. Their entire life, their whole healing journey, will be about them uncovering and establishing who they are. And they'll do this over and over again by putting themselves in situations where they must exercise courage. Their ultimate motive is to transform their desires into will. I want, I really want this job. I really want this partner. I really want to move here. I really want to start this business and then doing it, but keeping their higher self in mind. So because Aries is step one, it seems kind of strange, but it's the child of the Zodiac. But at the same time, there are strong correlations with leadership. So you'll find, because in order to establish a sense of self, you have to learn how to lead a life. And that's what Aries is going to be doing the whole time. And so there is a quality with leadership of them being bossy. And this is interpreted in two different ways. If you're someone who's being bossed around, you're like, dude, let me make my own choices. You're being a little too domineering. You're not listening to my ideas. I feel like I'm just a pawn on your chessboard. But when an Aries is bossing you around, it's because they either care about you, they care about what you're doing and what the outcome is, or they care about both. And what you have to understand is that the way that they are talking to you is the way that they're talking to themselves. And so it, for them to give you directives or even to like talk to you like, no, like this is what it is, that's their way of loving is by leading. And it's hard for them to differentiate. Another thing that you'll notice when you're dating in Aries is that when you're sharing stories about your day or something that you've overcome or something that you're excited about, a challenge point, they're going to bring it back to themselves. And it seems selfish, right? You're sitting here trying to decompress. You want that camaraderie. You want that partnership. And they just kind of steal the mic and start talking about who they are and their experiences. And again, it's because... As they're looking at you, it's almost like a mirroring effect. As they're looking at you, they're having a better understanding of who they are, what your place is in the world, but also what their place is in the world. And so, and the same thing is if you continue to talk about yourself for extended periods of time, they have the greatest tolerance for it because they do the same thing. So it's not so much that they don't care about you. The motive is what drives people and it's the sun sign. So what's driving this person constantly is to figure out who they are in multiple different situations. Being a fire sign means that they like being activated and energized and inspirational and motivating. And with the fire being expressed through Aries, all of that energy goes towards the self. <laughs> it does, it does, it goes towards the self. And so if you are dating an Aries and they are not motivating you, they're not pushing you to accomplish your goals, they're not trying to take leadership in your relationship, then something is off. If they're wanting to stay on the couch all day, if they're not exercising, if they are feeling like low, fatigued, then something is happening in their emotional body that's preventing them from keeping their pilot light lit. A lot of the times these are people who, Aries are extreme, so the, the, the pilot light is just out. Another thing is they don't like a plan. I'm speaking specifically just about Aries sun, if they have different placements, like a moon in Capricorn or a Venus in Capricorn, they're gonna love a plan. But if we're just talking specifically about what this person's ego needs as it's developing in lockstep with the soul, this is somebody who needs to not plan. Why? Because they're trying to build courage. They have to put themselves in new situations where they don't have any tools. They just have themselves, their mind, and their gut. And it's by 
consciously meeting each one of these challenges and overcoming them and maybe getting knocked down and getting back up, they're learning that they can trust in themselves, that they're capable, that they can function independently. And they learn who they are through those trials and tribulations, which is why they don't need a plan. Oh, and another thing is they feel very comfortable if you are completely yourself. They don't want you to be polite. They don't want you to be proper. I mean, again, if you have like those Capricorn placements or something that's a little bit more earthy, then they will prioritize those things, but solely the sun. Uh, it, they, they feel comfortable when you're cursing or when you're loud or when you're showing them expressions because it gives them permission to be themselves totally. They can relax. And not only that, they can accept you as you are and you can accept them as they are. Aries is ruled by Mars, and so it's competitive. Now, this is where in love, they kind of get a bad rep because yet again, there is this energy that's trying to manifest itself in real life, and it's kind of showing up in the wrong way. We're talking about love, right? Aries is ruled by Mars, and so it's competitive by nature. It's way of flirting, it's way of playing, it's way of connecting with you truly is wanting to play sports, wanting to beat you at those sports, Kind of like anything you can do, I can do better type attitude. That's how they show love. And the best way that I can use an example is like soldiers at war. They sit and they taunt and make fun of each other relentlessly. They throw out the jokes, but they will out in the world die for you. They will show up for you in every which way that they can. Now, some deal breakers for Aries. Anyone who encroaches on their autonomy. The opposite of Aries is Libra. Libra is all about partnership and companionship. So you can see how in love, we're working at we're working from a deficit, right? Aries is not programmed inherently for partnership because it doesn't even really know who it is yet. But anyone who's like, oh, we like this, we like this. Aries will be very quick to tell you, like, that's a you thing. This is you. This is me. And it's not because they don't like you and they want to separate from you. It's because they don't want to become one. They, they want to understand the difference. That's what their whole life goal is about, is understanding the difference between them and reality. And so if you are wanting to be their companion, or if you want to constantly run errands with them or do things with them, it's going to repulse them. They don't need a sidekick. They mob alone. Another deal breaker for Aries is not prioritizing them. Now that sounds kind of strange given everything that I just said, but an Aries can tell when you're not number one, when they're not number one, right? It's that competitive nature. If they feel like you are prioritizing someone else, they're pretty accepting of like work and outside accomplishments, but if you're prioritizing someone over them, done, done. And they're also a little flickery with their flame. So sometimes the relationship is really hot and heavy and it's important that they keep that fire lit, but you can find an inconsistency in their energy depending on how they're feeling internally and what you're giving them. If you are not making them feel as if they are important, that flame can come off real quick. Sun and Aries is also unapologetically itself unless it's being shamed over and over again for the way that they're trying to get their motives met or their needs met. And the best example that I'll use is like a toddler in a grocery store. Toddlers don't want to be at a grocery store. They don't see the need for it, right? We see the need, but they don't see the need. And so what do they do? They throw a tantrum. They don't care who sees. They don't care what people think about them. All they can think is, I don't like this. I would rather be somewhere else. And I'm going to make it very clear to the person who I'm involved with. And so you will find yourself managing tantrums with Aries from time to time. Sun and Aries is bold, courageous, independent, vivacious, feisty. They have the zest for life that is unquenchable unless something is seriously wrong. And they're also a spiritual warrior of types. And so you can expect that if you have an Aries on your team, that they are going to protect you, that they're gonna make sure that you're leading a life that you're proud of, that they're proud of. They have your back to the fullest extent. Someone who is born with their son in Libra is here to establish wholeness through cooperation in effort to reach spiritual enlightenment or a higher state of consciousness. So they take Gemini's curiosity, information and perspective and go, okay, cool. I have like enough information to work with, but what do you think? I would like to hear who you are and what you're doing and why you're doing it. They're very focused on the other. It's important to understand that the sun in Libra is debilitated, which means that it doesn't have 
it's not born really seeing itself clearly. It's similar to Leo where it's a super social sign, but in order for it to understand what it likes, it needs to understand what it doesn't like. And it does that through engaging with you, through taking on your personality, through engaging in conversation with you. They discover who they are by communicating with other people. Communication is very important to Libra. They can even be over communicators in many situations in multiple people's eyes. And one of the biggest misconceptions with, Li with Libras is that they are balanced. That's what they're here to learn. And so oftentimes Libra's lives are very chaotic. It's almost like they were born with a scale that was broken and they spend their entire life collecting tools to fix this inner scale. And so what Libra will do uh, in their younger years or if they are still in the process of developing is they will fabricate peace. They will find a way to fabricate peace externally because their external reality is a reflection of how they feel inside. So there is no, there is no barrier there. So if people are fighting inside, they're uneasy. If the environment is ugly and the colors don't coordinate and things don't look good, they don't feel good. They feel dirty. And so what you'll catch Libra doing in moments of chaos is they will try to remedy the situation, to make the, the conflict go away as soon as possible, even if they're not being fully transparent. They will actually sacrifice their opinions and their thoughts and their wants just so we can move on because it feels too destabilizing to them internally to sit with that conflict. As they get older, they obviously recognize that they're throwing their sanity on the line in the name of peace, but you know, they rise to the occasion eventually and start to advocate for what true peace is. And that's being heard and received and having that same, you know, compromising attitude reciprocated back. Libra is ruled by Venus, Aphrodite. And similar to Taurus, there is an affinity towards nature, but Libra likes to elevate it a little bit. It's like sophisticated art. It is sophisticated taste. It wants more than peace. It wants luxury because luxury represents an elevated state of peace. And so they like quality things. They focus on name brands because the external creates the internal. So if they buy things of value, then they are of value. And you will find that they like going to art museums or they like exploring the arts. They are into fashion or creating their own particular style because they need to engage in the mirroring process from an early age to understand who they are. They are gifted when it comes to understanding where someone stands, what they need, what they feel and who they are. They can almost adapt the personality of the person that they are around, especially if they're around them for an extended period of time. They are the masters of love and they are excellent at compromising and they often lead with an air or a style of communication that is easy on the ears and the eyes and it supports this urge and the rest of us to trust them. Like, here's this beautiful person who's talking so nicely, who's hyping me up, you know, like, let me open up to this person. And, and they're really good at establishing trust. They have this social lubricant over them that allows them to fit into any environment that they choose. It makes them like social chameleons. They can go anywhere. They are gifted debaters and they rule like the law. Judgment. I mean, normally when you think about law, you think about Saturn, but when you're in courts and someone is judging whether you're guilty or innocent, when you have to weigh information, when you have to put yourself in people's shoes and assess things in, in whatever way that Libra does it, uh, th they are the top performers. They know how to make a balanced, just call. Because Libra prizes a sense of elevated peace, because they like living the high, comfy life, they're not going to tolerate or appreciate someone who is rude or stirs up trouble. If you're taking them on a date and you're rude to the waiter or you don't tip well, or you just tend to leave a bad taste in people's mouths, they're going to be repulsed by you because you're not a work of art, you're trash. Libra is also punctual. It likes being on time. Again, this is pure, undisturbed Libra energy. If you have other things in your chart, if they have other things in their chart, you might see them run late, but just the sun in Libra 
doesn't appreciate people who waste time because they are a cardinal sign. This is someone who likes to accomplish things, who likes to stay on schedule. This is a leader. And so if you're not managing your time well, how well are you managing your life? And they don't like people who don't take accountability for themselves because they are often the ones who pick up the slack. They are hard workers, they're reliable. Like I said, they're leaders and they like to show off <laughs> the lifestyle that they have earned. So if you are someone that they can't show off, if you're someone who doesn't take pride over yourself, if you don't dress well, if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't groom yourself, if you have not graduated from a university, if you're not on their same level, they get very picky like that. It's like, no, you can't sit with us. Like you can take, you can take your dropout ass over there. <laughs> I'm being a little too mouthy for this, but eh. They consider themselves to be socially elite and they are, and they like to run with other successful people because it builds, you know, to, to their vibe, to their look, to their lifestyle. Leavers have been known to move slowly to the altar and it's because they really appreciate their options. They're indecisive. That's something that I haven't mentioned because they understand that when they choose one thing, that they're letting go of all of the other options. And so they want to make sure that whatever they commit to, whatever they choose is the best option. And the sooner that they recognize that no decision is a decision and that they're squandering their time and they're slowing down their own plans for the future, then the sooner they will make a decision. A hack to get a Libra to make uh, a decision more quickly is to make a decision. And what I mean by that is say, for example, you're dating a Libra and you're torn between Mexican and Italian for your dinner date. And you ask them, what do you want? They'll be like, I don't know, what do you want? Decide, say something. Because right away, they're gonna know whether or not they like what you chose. And then they will say, actually, no, Mexican sounds gross. Like I had that yesterday, like let's have Italian. <laughs> so yes, don't play that back and forth game because like I said earlier, they need to, or they, they will need to hear your feedback to understand where they stand in a particular moment. As lovers, I would say that they appreciate words of affirmation. Like I said before, communication is the lifeblood to a Libra. So they appreciate you complimenting them, you paying attention to how much effort they've put into their outfit or into a meal or into making reservations. They need that feedback and they expect it because that's what they're working on. That's what they're working towards. And they are programmed for partnership. They are excellent partners across the board because there is this desire to meet you halfway that doesn't, it's not always presented through the other zodiac signs. Sun in Libra, Sun in Aries, sister signs, polar opposites. In terms of the zodiac wheel, you guys cannot be further apart from each other. Now we do have fire and air, and when this combination comes together, I think of fireworks in the sky. When you guys are together, there is this atmosphere of coming together, celebrating, having a good time, and drawing a crowd of people around you. But because you guys are so different, there are natural challenges that present themselves. And I think that you guys are attracted to each other, kind of like a moth to a flame. It's, it's this, this person that you can't resist, but it's also so incredibly frustrating. So Aries is the baby of the Zodiac. It is step one in the soul's development. And Aries are here to establish a sense of self. That is its biggest accomplishment. It comes with all of the tools energetically to accomplish that mission. Libra is an air sign, socially oriented, and wants to understand itself in relationship to somebody else or something else. And so it wants companionship and partnership. It's here to master, you know, what it takes to be in contract with someone for the long haul. Now, it's not romantic inherently. In fact, Libra likes to keep a polite distance from people, but it does want a partner, it's focused on us. So when I think about Aries and Libra, I think about Aries saying like, me, 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 and Libra saying, we, we, we. So in order for this relationship to work, we have to have trust here because you guys are you know, on the same axes of who am I, who are we? Who am I to myself? Who am I to other people? And what you'll find is that 
your perspectives are so drastically different that it creates the perfect space for a wall to build and for you guys to charge in opposite directions being cardinal signs. But when you guys trust each other enough, you will hold your truth, but begin to explore somebody else's. You will begin to walk a path that you would not normally walk. And that is the blessing of this relationship. I use this example that I'm about to use now with every sister sign. So if you have already seen it, just skip past it. Um, Imagine you're Libra, you're my partner, okay? And someone sits this before us and they say, you guys have to work together and you can only use one word to describe to your partner what is before you. You are probably going to say camera. I am going to hear camera and think, what are you thinking? What you see and what I see are so drastically different and I struggle to see their connection that I am now questioning you, right? Which if there's trust, then we can get a little bit more curious. Like, okay, wait, we're on the same team. You wouldn't mislead me, but I don't understand what you mean. And so you want to keep the door of communication open because what can happen with this relationship is that you have the ability to see the full breadth of reality. You're holding a truth. Your partner is holding a truth and it's like one half of the largest truth. So don't compromise. This is not a uh, popular relationship advice. I think compromise is, is noble and I think it is a key to success, but specific to this relationship, you guys are trotting on different territory. If you guys compromise what you believe to be true, if Aries presents you with something Libra, and you're like, you know what? I don't actually accept that portion of it. So Aries cuts it out and then vice versa, you cut something out. There's a whole bulk of information that could have been integrated, but it wasn't because you guys weren't willing to wrestle with each other. And so I encourage you guys to, in those moments of extreme conflict, when you guys are experiencing vastly different realities and you struggle to see how they connect, do the relationship work and figure out where everything belongs because everything does have a place. You guys complement each other in really great ways because Libra struggles to see itself. Aries knows who it is and is trying to protect that at all times. Aries struggles to see other people's perspectives. Libra is naturally gifted and talented at putting themselves in other people's shoes. And so when you guys bring your strengths to the table, and use them constructively, then you guys break down barriers. But when you guys use your strengths against each other, we get destruction and we get difference and we get a wall or a barrier that sits between the two of you. Aries, it's important for you to understand that your Libra partner does not have the natural talent, skills, and abilities to self-actualize like you do. They need someone to act literally as a mirror and sit before them. Uh, Libra, you will also need to create some grace and space for Aries to be selfish. Your sanities hinge on your ability to accept where the other person is at without wanting to get them to do what you do when you want to. The magic of this is by you guys standing strong in who you are and choosing to work together. Now, some trouble areas is Aries is ruled by Mars, which means that it has very strong instincts. It doesn't like a plan. It likes to throw itself to the wolves and figure it out. But when it gets angry, it explodes. The blessing between the two of you is that Aries explodes quickly, but it also wants to restore peace quickly because you guys are both positively oriented signs. Libra may find that they are managing Aries tantrums in so many ways that, you know, Aries just has to put on this performance and they don't even care about social politeness or expectations. They don't care where they are. They don't care how they make you look. And Libra takes those things very personally. It likes coming off as poised and collected and and, and graceful even. And um, so yeah, Libra may have some issues with the ways that Aries manages its emotions and Aries can look at Libra and think you're a little bit too codependent. You're all on me. I can't be around you all of the time. And Aries will get particularly frustrated when there are specific situations where Libra is invited to step into their authenticity, to step into themselves, but they ignore the opportunity because they don't want to be judged, alienated, or just simply because they don't want to hurt someone's feelings. If you guys are intimate and close in a relationship, Aries will understand Libra's perspective a little bit more deeply and will kind of call you to the table of courage to assert yourself in so many ways. And so by living together and, and, and experiencing two vastly different realities, you guys get a sneak peek 
at what the complete opposite side of your energy is and it widens like the spectrum of colors for your life. This is also a delicious match because Libra is ruled by Venus, which is Aphrodite, feminine energy. And Aries is ruled by Mars, which is masculine energy. And so there is this sexual attraction to just be with each other. There is a lot of ways in which that you guys complement each other, not only because of your signs, but because of the planets that rule your signs. The way that you just exist is very attractive to the other person because they are different. And so again, I encourage you to it, embrace it and to use your partner's strengths as your own and just charge forward on life because you guys are both cardinal signs, which means, you know, there might be battles here and there specifically as it, as you guys are like making major life decisions. Where do we move? When do we get married? Where do we get married? What color is the house going to be? I can't really see Aries getting too uptight about that, but anytime that there is a leader <laughs> that needs to be called to the table, there may be a little bit of bickering and you should just be discriminating and, and take turns between the two. When do we need social grace? When do we need justice? And when do we need action taken right now to protect and potentially uh, serve us, right? Aries would be that, that leader who assertively takes action to defend. And Libra would be the person who assertively takes action to try and establish peace and justice. So this is immediately what comes to my mind. If you would like to work with me, you can find me at wellandrising.com forward slash services. Toodles.